thanks for that. Thanks for the introduction, and uh, thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, as Jeff said, my name is Leon LaRue. I'm a technical product manager at Epson, and I work specifically on our uh, Moveria line of augmented reality uh, smart glasses. Uh, so during this talk, hopefully I'm going to uh, either compel you to want to develop on our AR smart glasses or, or compel you to at least come to our booth and check out our demos because we've, we've got some cool demos for you guys. So uh, in terms of an agenda, I'm going to give you a bit of a, a background on Moverio because I know a lot of you maybe are not familiar with it. Um, I'm going to adopt the perspective of, of a developer who's wondering why I should be interested at all um, in, in these smart glasses. <clears throat> I'm also going to talk about what developers are doing with the, the smart glasses now uh, and what they're able to do. Hopefully that, that gives you some inspiration or some ideas for apps and solutions. Um, I'm going to jump into like what the tools are or resources that are enabling uh, these applications. And then lastly, uh, you know, leave you with some, some information on how you can get started or where you can go to learn more. Uh, so I, I'd like to start by just taking a quick poll. How many, how many people in here before AWE this week knew that Epson made AR smart glasses? Okay, all right, not bad, encouraging. Um, actually, it turns out um, Epson's been making AR smart glasses since 2011, uh, back when Google launched the first iteration of the Google Glass. Um, and actually, since then, we've launched uh, six different uh, sets of, of smart glasses. So, so in the AR world, we're, we're really one of the grandfathers, or one of, one of the veterans in the space. Um, and, and it was all born out of our projector business. Um, so, so definitely come check out, check out the glasses for yourself. Um, I do have a, a pretty high level like product overview just to kind of paint a picture of what it's like. Um, in general, our smart glasses consist of two components. Um, you've got the headset itself, which is the wearable display. Uh, it's binocular, uh, stereo, supports side-by-side 3D. Um, you've got a, a front-facing camera. Um, they are the lightest AR smart glasses or binocular smart glasses on the market. Um, the BT300s, uh, you know, they weigh about 68 grams or so. They're intended for, for long-term usage. Um, the other component is a handheld controller unit. Um, these are Android-based uh, smart glasses. So the, the controller unit is where the battery sits. It's where the processor sits. Um, it's how you interface with the glasses. So there's a trackpad that, that enables you to interface with the, the Android operating system. Um, and so this is, this is generally uh, the, the product overview at a high level. Um, one of the things that, that's really compelling about our smart glasses um, that, that we try to highlight and iterate over and over again is that, um, one, we, we have the most smart glasses for the most applications. So, so we don't have just one, one set, of glass, uh, set of glasses that you know, we, we, we sit on. We, we try to uh, create multiple iterations of glasses that fit you know, various scenarios. So we've got you know, consumer-leaning glasses, uh, glasses that are meant for, for entire fleet deployment. So if, if you're... If you're um, you know, if you're launching uh, an application uh, of, of smart glasses and you need a thousand units, then we have a, a pair of glasses that works well for that scenario. And we're able to mass produce these units uh, if needed. We even have smart glasses that accommodate um, hard hat uh, requirements in, in some industrial settings. Um, the other thing we like to emphasize is that uh, we're, the, we're the most av widely available pair of smart glasses in the U.S. So in addition to a bunch of on online retailers like Amazon and Best Buy, B&H, uh, we actually have a lot of brick and mortar partners that, that resell our glasses. Um, and so, so we like to uh, you know, uh, emphasize that we're the most widely available. So um, what, what can developers do or what are developers doing? And it's, it's kind of twofold. Um, if, if you're looking to reach uh, consumers, so if you're looking to reach the, the consumer install base for Moverio, then the way you go about doing that is very similar to, to smartphones. So we have an app store similar to how Amazon has an app store or Google and Apple have app stores. Um, and so if you're interested in reaching the install base, then what you do is you develop apps for the smart glasses, you publish them to our apps market, and, and they, you, you get instant reach to, to our install, install base of Movera users because they can just download the app. Uh, this is actually just what it looks like to, to look through the glasses. Um, obviously, because this is a screen, the, the, the black is appearing just as a black background, but if you were wearing the glasses, that's all transparent. Um, so I, I encourage you again to stop by the booth so you can see exactly what it looks like. You can see some, some VR games here, some utility apps, um, some drone apps. Uh, drone has actually turned out to be a really uh, popular use case um, for, for us in the consumer space. Um, it, it all started with an existing app that was developed for iOS and Android called DJI Go 4. It's DJI's uh, companion app for their drones. It enables you to do uh, you know, first person view so you can see what the drone sees while the drone's in the air. Uh, we, we contacted the developers of that app, 
got them to optimize it slightly for, for our glasses. They uploaded it onto our apps market and it's, and it's completely taken off. It's been very successful. Um, the, the drone use case has been actually so, so successful that uh, we hired a, a developer, a third party developer to create an entirely new drone experience which, which involves uh, flying a virtual drone in, in 3D, 360 space. Um, we have that at our booth as well, so, so come try it out. Basically, it enables you to fly a drone and, and, and train with real physics without the risk of crashing your drone. I've got a quick video to show you just to kind of uh, illustrate what that's like. Uh, it's a pretty short video, and there's no audio. Classic, okay. Uh, just check out the video. It, it's, it's a pretty short video. Um, the idea basically is you fly a, a hologram of a, of a DJI Mavic drone. Um, and you fly it with the DJI drone controller, so the physics are true. It, it's like flying a real drone. So there it is. Cool. Um, now, so that, that, that was for the, the consumer side. Now, if you're interested in developing apps for, for enterprise, for B2B or B2B2C, um, what we encourage you to do is become an ISV or an independent software vendor and partner with us directly. So, so what, that, what that entails is you, you have some software that you'd like to integrate, a software solution or application that you'd like to integrate uh, with our hardware. Um, we encourage you to partner with us, and we have an application for doing that on our website. Um, you know, some of the reasons we encourage you to do so is, is we're a tried and tested platform. Uh, we're available at scale, so if you need mass production, we're able to do that. Uh, we've got tons of developer support and resources available for you, um, and we can help with, with co-marketing and, and lead generation, cross-selling opportunities, things like that. Um, one example space where we're seeing um, some traction in, in this regard in terms of ISVs is, is a category of applications called visitor experience. Um, so so these, these are uh, use cases for the glasses that, in, that, that you might see at a museum or a cultural center or a corporate, uh, you know, corporate center. Um, so here's, here's a very quick video again with no audio, but it kind of paints the picture. Um, essentially, you, know, you, you deploy a fleet of glasses at a museum. Uh, you use some of the AR capabilities of the glasses to detect artwork on the wall and, and overlay that with some digital information, maybe enrich it with something. And maybe it's not just pictures, maybe it's sculptures and things like that. So this is just one example of in the enterprise space or in the B2B2C market where we've seen some traction of, of developers um, using our glasses to, to do large scale deployments. So, so those are some of the things that you can do. Um, I kind of want to touch briefly on, on how you go about doing that. Um, so I mentioned previously that the glasses themselves are, are, are Android powered. So you know, everybody who, who's an Android developer is already um, a Movario developer because most of the development um, is, is native Android. Um, so, so, so a lot of the resources that are out there today for, for Android, you can just leverage, including you know, uh, third-party SDKs for, for gesture and voice and AI and things like that. Uh, we do provide an SDK and, and, and documentation for that as well. Uh, most of it is to access some of the hardware that's specific to our glasses, like the display, the camera, uh, IMU in the, in the controller, as well as in the headset itself. So, so those SDKs are available to, to you today. And, and like I said, for, for Android developers, it's, it's going to feel like um, you know, no incremental learning required. We also, we also have support for Unity developers. So if, if that's where you create your VR and AR and uh, 360 content um, and through 3D assets and things like that, we have a plugin for, for, uh, for our Movario smart glasses. Um, the plugin consists of uh, you know, prefabs and, and some, some sample assets and scenes, full on apps that you can literally just deploy using the, uh, the plugin code for, for deploying to our Android device. So, so all of that is there and actually we're, we're, we're rolling out some, some, some cool updates to this plugin to enable uh, more ready uh, development of, or deployment of applications. Um, this, this one's kind of big. So uh, we, we just announced yesterday a Movario uh, AR SDK. So it's essentially an augmented reality SDK that, that's optimized for Movario and created by us, by Epson. Um, you know, it enables true augmented reality experiences um, in the sense that users who, who use your applications can now detect and interact with real world objects. Um, I say that it's optimized for Movario in the sense that you can do uh, what's called optical see-through. Um, so, so rather than seeing a video feed with some digital overlays, um, you can actually see uh, straight through the glasses, through the transparent glasses, and only see relevant overlays. It's kind of hard to, hard to communicate that concept, but, but we have it 
uh, you know, we're demoing that at the booth as well, so come, come by and check it out. Uh, but that, that's a really, uh, it's a value add of, of wearing smart glasses as opposed to, as opposed to doing AR through, through phones uh, with an AR SDK like an AR kit or an AR core. Uh, we also have a calibration routine as part of the SDK that, that allows for users to correct for interpupillary uh, distance or IPD, uh, so we can correct for that as well. A couple of features that we, that we uh, emphasize in the SDK is we can do uh, object tracking that's based on CAD data. So you can use CAD models to, to both you know, print, print models or print you know, 3D uh, uh, structures and then also train applications uh, to recognize objects. Um, and then we also support you know, 2D image tracking like a lot of, uh, a lot of AR SDKs do. Um, the Moveria SDK, like I said, was announced yesterday. Uh, between now and, and sometime in the fall, uh, we'll be doing a, a, an open beta. Um, and you know, we're basically soliciting uh, users for feedback. Um, and, and it will be officially launching in the fall. Um, it's free for Moveria developers. Uh, so we, we encourage you all to, to give it a shot and try it out and give us feedback if, if you're interested. Um, as I mentioned, it does come with an Android API, uh, full Unity support, and tons of documentation and samples. Um, that being said, e even though we just launched an AR SDK, I, I do want to kind of reiterate that that um, you know my my role in particular is to um, grow the developer ecosystem for Moverio, and and part of that is partnering with third party uh, hardware and software um, companies so, so that we can provide developers with as much tools uh, as possible. To that end, uh, we we do uh, have. Uh, several AR SDKs uh, provided by uh, MaxST, Wikitude, and Eighthwall. Um, and, and these are all partners that, to some extent or other, have optimized their SDKs for Moverio, for, for smart eyewear, as opposed to just for phones. Um, so we, we do continue to support these third party partners uh, because they're doing great stuff and they've got tons of, of, of uh, developers in their communities as well. And we want to basically uh, bridge, bridge those communities together. Uh, we do have a show special going on uh, at AWE for our smart glasses. Um, this is, you know, the, the easiest way to kind of get started is to get your hands on one of these devices and, and play around with it and become familiar with it. Um, so there's a, we have a, uh, as many units as we were able to carry to the show at our booth. And, and as long as they're there, we'll, we'll, we'll honor this $200 uh, a discount show special. Um, so, yeah. And then... Uh, I do want to reiterate the fact that we do have tons of, of developer resources available for, for Moveria developers, and it, and, it, and it starts with you know webinars, tutorials, and how-to videos that we try to publish and keep up to date on YouTube. Um, so we, we try to make it very easy to to kind of uh, get developers started. So if, if it's really just if you're starting at, at square one and it's about getting your development environment set up um, in Android Studio or in Unity, we have tons of videos for that. Um, and like I said, for for most people who develop Android, it, it, it's it's similar to what you're already doing. Uh, lastly, if you want to uh, learn more, this is, this is our website. It's where you'll find all of our product information, uh, information about our partners, information about our, our developer resources. Uh, again, check out our YouTube channel. And then I've also got my uh, personal contact information there if, if you want to connect. And that's it. If you guys uh, have any questions, I'm happy to take those. That's right, yeah, so it was just announced yesterday. It's available now, and between now and the fall, it's in beta, essentially, um, but it's, it's available to anybody. If you come by the booth, I'll give you the URL, and you can, you can download it, um, and then in the fall, we'll do the official, official launch. Uh, but it, it's free now, and it will, even after launch, will, will be free for Moverio developers. Yeah. Uh, so the glasses have a diagonal 23 degrees. Uh, 